everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to break down the Encanto trailer. I'll be focusing more on story rather than Colombian references because obviously I'm not Colombian. The trailer opens up with an aerial view of the Macrigal home and as you can see the house is built around a central courtyard. There is a donkey pen at the front and you can see a candle in the grandmother's room. Next there is a shot of a large gathering of people in the courtyard of the Macrigal house. It has been beautifully decorated by Isabella as it has a ton of flowers. The grandmother is addressing the crowd and telling them the story of how the Macrigal family got their magic. Six members of the family are in the crowd but Peppa and Felix are at the top of the stairs. I believe they're up there with their son Antonio as this is his gift getting ceremony slash party. There is then a solo shot of Mirabelle listening to her grandmother's speech alone, isolated from the rest of the family and I feel really sorry for her. After this there is a close up of the grandmother and she explains that the candle blessed the Macrigal family with a miracle, their house coming to life with magic. Behind her you can see the entrance to one of the family's magical rooms. It has a festive sign above it with Antonio's name further indicating that this is Antonio's power receiving party. We then see Luisa, Camillo, Giulietta, Isabella, Dolores and Augustine. They are holding each other showing their family unity. After this we get a flashback of when the Macrigal family got their magic. Here you can see a younger version of Alma, probably in her 20s, holding her three triplets. The magical candle is on the ground and around it pavers start forming. These pavers then develop into the Macrigal house. Alma stares at the house in wonder and here we get a better look at the three triplets. From left to right we have Peppa with the red hair and yellow blanket, Julieta with the blue blanket and Bruno with the green blanket. We then see a beautiful shot of the house that we previously saw in the teaser trailer. The house is replacing the classic Disney logo castle and the yellow butterflies replace the pixie dust. Mirabelle then says hola casita while waving and we see a hallway in the house decorated with Isabella's flowers. The bricks of this hallway then play music like a piano which I thought was really cool. The next three shots I believe are part of the opening number. This number which is sung by Mirabelle introduces the family and is similar to the opening of Beauty and the Beast. Belle is one of my favourite Disney songs so I'm very excited to see something similar. The first shot that I believe is part of this song is located in the centre courtyard of the house. Mirabelle yells out floors and jumps which causes the bricks of the house to move outwards. She then moves to the dining room where there is a picture of the family tree on the wall. While in this room Mirabelle yells out drawers and they magically move along to the music. She then yells out let's go as she slides down the stairs which magically transform into a ramp. As you can see from these shots the house is a character in the story. Director and writer Jared Bush said in a recent interview that like the ocean in Moana the house of Encanto is a character. As opposed to Moana our house is a little more opinionated and flawed. It's a house that plays favourites like families do, a house that messes with people. This is Casa Magrigal, the magical home of the Magrigal family. It's alive with magic and its own unique personality. We then see the entire Magrigal family taking a photo. They are in Antonio's new room and are showing off their respective gifts. Peppa has produced a rainbow, Dolores is gesturing towards her ear, Isabella is producing flowers and Louisa is holding a giant rock. Notably Antonio is not wearing his normal clothing. He is instead wearing all white as this is obviously his party and he had to dress up. He is also gesturing above to the birds who he can now speak to. You might have noticed that Mirabelle is not there and I think she is taking the photo, I feel so bad for her. You might also notice that the two sides of the family are organised by clothing colour. Julieta and Augustine's side of the family has jewel and cooler tones in their clothing and Peppa and Felix's side of the family has more of a warm colour palette. After this we see a shot of Camillo greeting party guests. He says Cecilia up top and transforms into the girl. Cecilia was the young girl who told Mirabelle maybe your gift is being in denial in the teaser and it was so funny. Next is one of my favourite sequences in the trailer featuring the gorgeous Isabella. She is with her grandmother in the village and I have a feeling that she is her grandmother's favourite judging from her loving expression. The area also has some large floral displays that I presume she created. As Isabella spins flowers come out from her in a circular fashion. This shot is beautiful and I presume it will be part of a musical number. 
We then see a toucan at the entrance to Antonio's new magical room. He chirps and Antonio says I understand you, suddenly realising that talking to animals is his magical gift. Special shout out to Ravi who sounds adorable as Antonio here, I really love the voice acting. I also recently found out that Ravi watches my videos, so big shout out to Ravi and thank you so much for watching. Anyway, while this is happening, we see Mirabelle watching Antonio getting his gift and she looks a bit conflicted here. I presume that she was holding on to hope that the house had just stopped giving magical gifts, but since Antonio has just received one, it now feels personal. Notably, in the background of this shot, you can see Peppa's magical door. It features her name, a picture of her and a son, as her magical gift is that her emotions control the weather. After this, there is a shot of the village leading up to the magical house. Many people from the town are going to the house to celebrate Antonio getting his gift. The Mirabelle voiceover then says, I'm not super strong like Louisa, while Louisa lifts a bridge that Mirabelle and some children are standing on. A random man then says, the donkeys got out again, and Louisa replies on it, while lifting four donkeys and tossing another up into the air to add to her pile. Mirabelle is there, but she doesn't seem angry with Louisa, which is different to how she's about to react to Isabella. Next, there is a shot of Mirabelle talking to her mother. I think that they may be in Julietta's magical room because of the yellow lighting that is similar to the colour of the magical room doors. Obviously, because she has the power to heal with food, she would have a kitchen in this room and that is where this scene is. In a recent interview, the creative said that Julietta is the town doctor, which is obviously a massive role with a ton of responsibility. Mirabelle talks about how she is not perfect like Isabella and she seems to have some resentment towards her due to the way this line is said and her hand gestures. As she speaks, we get some shots of Isabella. She is swinging from a vine in the house courtyard as people down below cheer. Mirabelle, however, is not impressed and gives her an annoyed stare. Isabella then swishes her hair in Mirabelle's face, causing her to be covered in flowers. I don't think that Isabella did this on purpose, I just think she may be a tiny bit self-obsessed and didn't notice Mirabelle. The creatives recently gave a really interesting description of Isabella, which I thought I'd share here. Bush describes Isabella as effortlessly graceful and her poise has made her the golden child of the family. But Isabella is much more than she seems and secretly she feels trapped in her role as the perfect magra girl. Diane Guerrero voices Isabella and Smith says she brilliantly captured Isabella's sweetness, her kind of sisterly cattiness and the real complexity of a young woman who's feeling confined by a family role that doesn't quite fit. So in summary, Isabella is not mean, she just feels trapped and is acting out. Additionally, during this sequence, we get a glimpse of Louise's magical door, which includes her lifting weights. I kind of want her room to be a massive gym. Next, we see a cracked piece of pottery that I presume used to be part of the house. We then see Mirabelle cut her hand on this pottery. She is alone in the courtyard at night, maybe after Antonio's party has finished. We then see Mirabelle back with her mother, wanting to know why she didn't get a gift while eating an arnipa con queso, which is a cheese stuffed corn cake. I've never heard of this snack before, but it looks really delicious and I hope they start selling it at Disneyland. Julietta assures Mirabelle that she is just as special as anyone else in this family, while healing her hand with this food. Mirabelle questions this sentiment as her mother just healed her hand, which is a fairly good point to be honest. Now this next section of the trailer is when the house begins to crack and everyone panics. In an interview, the creator said that when the family is fighting, the house cracks, showing that it is the foundation for them all and their relationship with one another. We go back to the scene where Mirabelle found the broken piece of pottery in the courtyard, and we can see the roof of the house shaking. Mirabelle then notices that the floor beneath her is also shaking, and then it proceeds to crack. She says Casita in a confused way, clearly not knowing what is going on. Mirabelle then looks up and sees that the walls of the house are cracking as well, and she looks terrified. There is then another shot of the walls cracking, featuring Dolores' magical room entrance and Camillo's magical room entrance. We then see Felix, Peppa, and Julieta in the dining room, looking scared as the walls crack around them. A toucan is also in this room and squawks in fear. A voice belonging to the black sheep of the family, Bruno, says that the magic is in danger and we see two capybaras and a toucan running away from the house. Antonio, however, does not run and nearly gets crushed by a door. Luckily, his father Felix saves him. Then Mirabelle is seen with her grandmother in the courtyard of the house and the floor cracks beneath them. After this, we see the pavers rippling out, blocking Julietta, Augustine and Peppa from leaving. Then the magical candle falls due to the cracking. 
The grandmother then addresses Julietta and Augustine, saying that we must protect our home, we must protect our family. You can see here that there are only a couple of cracks, so she probably thinks it's not that serious and that the family should stay. We then see an exterior view of the house. The lights flicker and then go out completely. I originally thought that the family was outside the house having been evacuated, but it is actually a random group of people. We then get another shot of the family within the cracking house with Mirabelle in the centre with a chandelier swinging wildly above. Behind Mirabelle we have Isabella with the grandmother, again proving my theory that Isabella is her favourite. Pepper is with Felix and I just want to say that I already shipped them, they are couples goals. Also, the song We Don't Talk About Bruno is going to feature segments from their wedding day and I'm keen to see it. Mirabel then says that this is her chance and she will save the magic. She will obviously succeed because she hasn't had to rely on magic to function like the other members of her family. This shot I presume is before the house starts falling apart as there are no cracks on the wall. Here we see Louise's room again as well as Abuela's and Julietta's. Additionally, we can see the magical candle located in Alma's room. Mirabel runs up the stairs and into a hallway and it looks like she is trying to work out what is happening with the house as she is analysing the floor. We then cut to Mirabel asking, wait, how do I save the magic? And a house table shrugs, which is so funny and creative. I presume that this is Mirabel's nursery as it doesn't look as fancy as the magical rooms. It only has a small bed with a red pillow. Mirabel has no choice but to live here as her magical door never appears. Then things really start to go off the rails with the house collapsing around Mirabel while she is holding some yellow sparkly thing. It is not a candle but it clearly contains the same magic as it is the same colour. The next section involves everyone losing their powers and panicking. Firstly, we see Louisa talking to the grandmother and Mirabel, saying that she is losing her gift. She is very panicked in contrast with her tough exterior. Hats off to Jessica Darrow and the animators for making a character that has such a tough exterior sound and look so vulnerable. Bush recently said in an interview that Louisa is actually sensitive and secretly bursting with oversized emotions that conflict with her tough persona. Secondly, we see Peppa with her son Camillo. Because the house falling apart is a very stressful situation, Peppa's emotions are going crazy and she is producing a storm cloud with lightning. It strikes Camillo, causing him to transform into Felix and then Alma. Tea from a falling teapot then burns his butt, causing him to transform into a goosting. This demonstrates a lack of control over his transformations. Thirdly, we see Isabella losing her powers. She attempts to swing on a vine but instead falls to the ground. As her dress was made of magic flowers, it has now turned green as the magic disappears. They are clearly decaying. Out of all of the family, Isabella seems the most devastated by losing her powers, probably because they are really tied to her identity. The next part of the trailer is the most confusing to me. Mirabel is standing on a circle with magical green lights under it. She then starts to put together two pieces of green glowing glass which kind of match her glasses. I have no idea what this means so if you have theories let me know. Murphy's Multiverse who have seen 30 minutes of the film said that Encanto has a very Nancy Drew tone and is kind of like a young adult detective story so I think it is going to be fun to work out this mystery along with Mirabel. Next we see Mirabel with Antonio, an image that we have seen before. As I said previously, I believe this scene is in the nursery and Antonio's Jaguar toy foreshadows his gift. We then see our first look at Bruno telling Mirabel that the fate of the family is going to come down to her. We know that Bruno hasn't been living with the family for a while and I think that he has come back to warn his family that the magic is going to disappear. According to Bush, Encanto is filled with mysteries and Bruno is one of the most delicious mysteries in the film. After this, there is a shot of Mirabel and Louisa hanging off a snowy cliff. I believe that this is part of Louisa's song as it doesn't seem to fit into the world of the film. This song is called Surface Pressure and it is an energetic reggaeton where she sings about not always being as strong as she appears. Mirabel then says, I can't do this in front of a dull yellow background. We then see an hourglass shaped entrance with what appears to be a water or mist flowing behind it. Due to the hourglass imagery, I have a feeling that somebody, maybe Bruno, has tried to change past events and this has caused the family to never receive their magic. We have found out that Pedro's self-sacrifice results in the family being given the magical candle. However, if he doesn't die, this means that the family won't get their magic. We then see Bruno and Mirabel together. She looks pretty pumped, but Bruno looks a bit sceptical. I believe that she has a plan, but he doesn't think it will work. And 
Antonio then says, let me help you. The rats told me everything. Well, he is surrounded by animals, including a capybara, a tapir, coatis, and rats. I just look at these animals and think about all the merchandise I'm going to buy. Antonio then tells the jaguar to not eat the rats, and the jaguar looks away all sad. Something tells me that this jaguar is going to have to become a vegetarian if he wants to live with Antonio. We then see another shot of Louisa and Mirabelle. Louisa is fighting a giant three-headed dog in what looks to be a Greek amphitheatre filled with cheering donkeys. Greek mythology has a three-headed dog named Cerberus, but I wasn't able to find any info about this kind of dog existing in Colombian mythology. This Greek theme leads me to believe that this is again a sequence in Louisa's song. We then go back to the mysterious green circle, followed by Mirabelle running away from falling rocks with the green glowing pieces in her hand. Next is another shot of Antonio, and I presume this is when he first enters his new room. He is surrounded by animals and seems in awe. He then slides down a tree and swings on a snake, and I presume this is a friendly snake, not the terrifying ones we have in Australia. His room is inspired by the Choco Rainforest, and Disney hired a botanist to consult on the flora that would decorate the room. Mirabel then gets up on the roof to see some dazzling fireworks. This feels like a sequence in her I Want song. Then we have another Louisa song sequence with her and Mirabelle jumping out of the ocean and I can just tell this song is going to be wild. Mirabelle is then seen trapped with her green pieces probably during the climax of the movie. She is trying to bang down a vault shaped door and she succeeds as she bursts through in the next shot with sand overflowing behind her. This vault again features an hourglass symbol further proof that the mystery of the house is connected to time. Then there is a lot of shots of Mirabelle swinging through what I presume are the ruins of the Macriel home. For the final sequence, we see a giant stone arrow pointing towards a flight of stairs with the words, your future awaits. Mirabelle then says, a lot of stairs, but at least I'll have a friend, referring to the toucan. But sadly, he flies away and Mirabelle says my favorite line of the trailer. Nope, he flew away immediately. <laughs> Quitter! <sighs> Seriously, Stephanie Beatrice is smashing her voice acting here. She is so, so funny. I also love the subversion of the trope that Disney princess characters have a connection to animals. Anyway, that is all for today. Like this video if you liked it and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now and have a magical day.